Well, welcome everyone. My name is Lori Rubin. We've got a couple of our Milio photos of people with us, JC Figueroa, Angela Andrew, and Tracy Cook, who will be in the background answering your questions. And then we've got, of course, uh, Jennifer Loomis, as well as um, Sarah Maglaris. And they're gonna be doing a presentation today. Uh, it's gonna be a great one too. They're from the Signature Photo Organiz Organizing or SPO business here. It's a woman owned and operated business in the Pacific Northwest. They're gonna be doing a little intro of each other here. So you'll find out more about them, but this is gonna be a great presentation. They're gonna take you through, you know, why they love Milio so much uh, to how they organize their photos and then uh, benefits for Milio for the professional photo organizer and becoming a professional organizer as well. We have a brief survey. Uh, Angela, if you could put that up there. We're just curious if anyone is interested in becoming a certified Milio photo consultant. Go ahead, put yes, maybe, or no. That'd be great. Okay, and while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and send this over to Jennifer. She's going to go ahead and start with the intros. And everybody relax and enjoy. So it's going to be a great presentation. We're looking forward to it. Are you going to send it to me or should we send it to Sarah? Wherever you, uh, yeah, Sarah. Yeah, fine. let's send it to Sarah. Sarah can run the slideshow. Okay. If that's cool with you. All right, Sarah, yeah. you ready? Yep. Okay. Hi, you guys. I'm Jennifer Loomis and I'm here with Sarah McGlaris, who is my, who I just pronounced her last name wrong. And I have done that for now five years. Anyway, she is my right hand person and she's amazing. And we're here to talk to you a lot about why we love Milio. So um, what we're going to talk about today is, and Sarah's going to advance the slides for me. Okay. Topics for today. Who are we and why should you care? Well, we're about to tell you that. The photography perspective and why it's important. We're both photographers, and I think that makes a big difference in terms of how we approach this. Why Milio? We are Milio evangelists, and we have worked five years in the industry of photo organizing and have tried a lot of different things and have come up with this being the best, and we're going to tell you why today. We are going to go over our photo organizing process and Milio's role, and we have had some trials and errors through this process, and Milio has just become so important to us. Um, we're going to have, I'm going to have Sarah highlight our favorite organizing features um, for you guys to contemplate and think about how that can help you either with your photo organizing business or your own photographer photographs, whether you're a professional photo photographer or you're just a hardcore hobbyist with terabytes and terabytes of data and you can't find it. Um, we will talk about the benefits of Milio for a professional photo organizer. This is more of sort of hearkening back to the highlights, but also looking at sort of a bird's eye view as a photo organizer, how come Milio has become so important to us. And then what last, a couple last tips are why would you want to hire a photo organizer? Like, why would you ever do that? Is that even a thing? We find a lot of people in our industry are like, oh my God, I didn't even know somebody was out there doing this. This is amazing. And it could be something that you can do to help other people in your community. And then becoming a professional photo organizer, what are some things to think about, right? How, what's your why? We're going to talk, give you a couple talk topics there to think about and start to kind of blend through your mind to say, oh, I want to do this, or I don't want to do that. Um, lastly, certified Milio photo consultants. We both are certified consultants. It's a great resource for you. Sarah scored the highest on the test. She probably doesn't want me to tell you that. I didn't. But anyway, why would you want to become a certified Milio photo consultant? There's a lot of benefits for that. Okay, let's get started. All right, we are Signature Photo Organizing, woman-owned and run business. And as Lori said, we're in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we have 30 years of expertise in photo organization and we are a hybrid. We do digitizing and organizing of analog and digital media. We create a custom photo libraries that contain these collections. And our specialty is full-time image management of family photo collections. So we are doing it all. So think of the hybrid. We have analog and digital. Okay. So we got our start. How did we get started? So I've been a professional photographer for 30 years. Five years ago, a client, photo client to me came to me just in 
kind of dire straits. She was super stressed out. She had four kids. They were trying to, I think her mother-in-law had just passed away and they couldn't find any photos for the, for the, um, memorial. And she was like, Oh my God, I need help. So at that point I was like, uh, I'm a photographer, but okay, I'll help you. Cause I really like her and I like working with her. And I thought, well, she'll be okay to work with as I sort of figure out how to take this to a client. Um, and since then, we've just expanded and grown and we continue to grow. Um, we've got another person that we've signed on. We've got Sarah. And we have some other outsourcing uh, businesses that we use to help us digitize. And as I mentioned earlier, we offer a hybrid model. So we do both digital organizing and analog organizing. Okay. So we take those pots of images. That's how I like to explain it to our clients. And most of them have both. I think over time, though, the analog is going to sort of subside. And as you see, we are all just kind of being washed away by a tidal wave of digital images. So we combine both of those in a digital photo library using Milio. Oh, we love Milio. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we offer long term annual image management of these libraries for private clients. That is in the sense that every year they give us their images, we organize them and come out with a photo book. We keep their images on our servers, and we'll talk about that in a while. And Milio has been very, very important in offering this high value service to our clients. Okay. Uh, next. Okay. So, photographer's perspective, I wanted to touch on this a little bit. I'm a 30 year professional photo photographer. I got a master's from MU, and I know a bunch of my uh, MU colleagues, I think, are on this. Um, known for founding uh, the genre of maternity photography. So big deal. Well, it is a big deal because I started out with negatives and then I've moved towards digital. So what happens is I have a 30 year archive of pregnant women, one of the largest in the, in the world. And at any given point, I have a client who will call me 10, 15 years later and say, hey, I wanna order another print from my pregnancy photo shoot. Based on how I've developed our organizing and how we've moved from negatives to digital, we can find anything. They naming, storage, backups. We know how to back things up. We have a set of NAS drives, which is that are backed up locally, also externally. So we have a full system as photographers that we've developed to protect those memories. And we've transferred those skills over to protect the memories of our private clients. Okay, let's see how we found Milio and why we use it. So, okay, we, as professional photographer, we use all the Adobe products. We're not gonna name everything, but you know the Adobe products that are used in the photo business. We wrestled with a lot of these and then we started taking on more and more of these clients who had terabytes and terabytes of images. And we realized after several client interviews, we moved from, an Adobe product to another product that was expensive and clunky. And then basically I saw an ad for Milio. So good job ad team. And I said to Sarah, I said, I sent it to Sarah. I'm sure it was like late at night. I'm like, what about this? Cause as we were beating our head against the wall, having moved from Adobe product to another product um, and getting feedback from our client and her saying, you know what, this is not working. This is what I want to do. So we ran the pace. We did some tests on Mylio. We worked it hard. We reached out to JC, who's just been amazing. And we realized that this enables us, Mylio enables us, I like to think of it as seats. I'm sitting here. Sarah is sitting in Seattle. Our client is sitting in Atherton. We have three seats, right? At any given time, if we you know if we have their database their photo library turned on everything's the process is in place we can all be sitting watching the same database okay and there's a it's very cost effective for our clients photo organizing happens to be pretty expensive um and we for the long term image management clients we have access to their photo libraries long term and then we can also prompt them to say hey guys especially for their particularly for digital let's upload your images couple of other things we love the development team the development team of Milio is super responsive we have great support from them we really believe in building long term relationships with our vendors and we hadn't had the same experience with any of the other software we can sort of say how sarah mainly says how do we do this and they are so wonderful they help our job 
be easier. Okay. And we, we really appreciate that. And it really was designed with organizing photos in mind. Okay. Where are we? Okay, so we have a process for onboarding and we wanted you to kind of see that. Um, and before I turn this over to Sarah, so we, depending on our client, obviously, we have three distinct funnels of work. We have an onboarding funnel, an organizing funnel, and an offboarding funnel, okay? And in all of these, Mylio plays a role, okay? And this basically depends on our client, do they have digital files only? Do they have analog files only? Do they, and then we do add our images to our network servers, what's our NAS drives, their images. We create a Milio account, we add a NAS as a vault, and then we link the source folder of images. Then based on the organizing preferences of the clients, we run through that. And then when we offboard, we feel like we can deliver val these vaults to the clients. We provide lessons on how to use Mylio, links to the manual and the forum, which is superb. And we then also, we can sync the external hard drives as vaults, but we can also stay in touch with their library from our studio, okay? And I think, let's see, what's... Sarah, so, okay, so now, because Sarah is so great with Mylio, I want her to kind of talk about the, our favorite organizing features of Mylio, and she's going to walk you through those. Yes, yeah, so we have, I mean, first of all, we love all of the features in Mylio, but we have um, a few in particular that we use for most of our clients and that are our favorites. So you can see here creating backups, organizing by folders, um, the facial tagging tool, keywords, star ratings, uh, sync policies, spaces, which is a new um, addition after the last update, and dynamic search and quick filters. So starting with vaults and devices, um, this allows us to create multiple backups of our clients' photo libraries. It also allows us to sync all of their family's devices. Um, so as you can see here in the example, um, we have, this is an example for my family's Mylio account. We have my mom's laptop, my laptop, my sister's, and my dad's phone, all syncing to the library. And then this also allows for multiple locations, um, our vaults to be in multiple locations, which adds protection. Um, so for all of our clients, we'll sync at least two external hard drives. And we always recommend to them that they keep one of those hard drives at a friend or family member's house, um, just in case of any kind of what we call events like a fire or a flood, they have um, a backup at a different location. And expert tip, as Jennifer had mentioned, um, this allows us to have continuous management of our clients' photo libraries. So you can see right here um, on my own family's library, as an example, the studios, um, our studio's computer is hooked up. And so we do this for our long-term image management clients. We keep our studio computers and our servers syncing with their photo libraries. So whenever they add new photos um, to their library, we have access to those and we can go in and organize them. And this is just a little graphic that kind of shows what that looks like. So this is client A. This is not a full-time image management client. This is a client where we would go in, set up their Mylio account, organize everything, and then deliver it to them on hard drives. You can see all of the different devices hooked up. They're hard drives that we deliver, and then a remote vault is what we call it, um, which is just a hard drive in a different location. And then this is an example of that full-time image management client. So you can see again, it has all of the family members' devices, and then our studio computer and our servers hooked up, and then we have an offsite backup as well. All right, our next favorite feature is the folders. Um, we like this because any changes you make to the folders tab in Mylio gets made directly on the hard drives as well. So for a lot of clients, we'll organize their photos in two folders by year and month. This is just an organization that makes sense for most people. Um, if it's a client where we have done analog uh, media as well, we'll organize it by media type. You can see an example down here. Um, so folders with albums, prints, negatives, that kind of stuff. This makes it really easy for clients to find um, specific types of media and their images. 
Um, and then expert tip, another reason that we organize by folders in particular um, is because it allows our clients to then make another copy onto an additional external hard drive of that folder structure that they can then share with friends and family that maybe don't use MyLeo. All right, facial tagging, which is my favorite feature. Um, so we use this for most of our clients. Prior to MyLeo, we were tagging photos by person using keywords. Um, the facial tagging is way cooler and a lot faster. Um, so as we start teaching MyLeo who is who in each photo, um, it starts to automatically tag that person. So that has saved me a lot of time in tagging our clients' photos. It also allows our clients to find um, photos of any family members or friends right away at any time. Um, you can see an example here of my family's photo library. I scanned in a bunch of old photos and have tagged all of these images by person. So if I want to find all of the photos of Johnny McGlaris, for example, I would just click on his little box and I can do that. Um, expert tip, tagging pets. This is something that I like to do with my cat. We have a few clients that um, also adore their pets and want to be able to find photos of them very quickly. So you can, although Milio's facial tagging tool doesn't usually recognize pets, um, you can manually tag them um, or you can use the other people uh, tool to do so. So I do that for my cat and um, we do that for some of our clients as well. Star ratings. So we do this for a lot of our clients. Um, we will go through and we will choose what we think are the best images. Um, we then a lot of times will make physical albums using these best images. Um, some of our clients, like this one in particular, she had pulled out specific photos that she thought were the best as well. So we give her um, her chosen bests a four-star rating and our chosen bests a five-star rating so that she can easily find the ones that she knows she thought of as the best and the ones that we have chosen as the best as well. Keywords. So as I mentioned, we had been using keywords prior to Milio to um, tag all of our clients' images by person. Um, so keywords are great because if you are transitioning like we did from a different photo management software and you've already done a bunch of work and exported your images, those keywords will get brought into Milio. Um, Milio also has a smart tag feature. So it'll scan your library and suggest smart tags based on the photos. You can see up here, this image of the dog, it recognizes that there's a dog in there. So if I hit that little check mark, it would get added to the keywords. Um, you can also filter by the smart tags. A lot of our clients' kids like to click through the little animal filter and see all the different animals in the photo library. Um, some of our clients prefer that we use keywords over other features just because it's something they're more used to. Um, if that is the case, we will then tag by event or holiday sometimes. And then if you don't want to go in and manually tag your pets, you can continue to just use keywords and uh, select large groups of photos and tag those um, with specific names. And you can see we've done that for one client. Her dog's name is Sadie, so it got tagged in the keywords. All right, sync policies. So as Jennifer mentioned, we have our studio computers uh, set up to sync with multiple clients' photo libraries. So as you can imagine, that is hundreds of thousands of images. Um, if we had all of the originals saved on our computers, we would run out of space almost immediately with like one client. Um, so with sync policies, we can set our computers to be either catalog or space saver. So thumbnails or auto-optimized versions um, of the photos. And this allows us, like I said, to work with a bunch of different clients' photo libraries on one computer. We also set up our clients, particularly their cell phones, to be cataloged because a lot of times people don't have a lot of space on their cell phones. Um, so you can set it up to be, again, catalog or space saver um, so that they don't eat up all of their storage space. Um, another feature that we like to use for clients as far as sync policies go. And this is an example um, from my dad's phone and our family uh, photo library. Uh, he has a bunch of videos of nature cameras that he set up across our yard. Um, and so they, to be able to view a video on Milio on your phone, you have to have access to the original um, photo. 
or original video. And so I've set up a sync policy for his phone where his entire photo library is just thumbnails. And then I went in and I made a quick collection of the best videos um, from the nature cameras. And I added it as an image policy here under his device um, where he will then get the originals downloaded onto his phone. So he can view those videos um, at any time and he doesn't need to worry about our uh, hard drives and our vaults being connected to the photo library. Spaces. So this is, as I mentioned, a new feature that Milio just released and we love it. Um, this allows your friend and families to view certain groups of photos. So if you don't want to share your entire photo library with your mom or your kids, um, you can make specific spaces for them. Um, you also don't have to worry about exposing private photos to the person sitting next to you on the bus or on the plane. Um, you can set your photo library to the public space. And then, like I said, that stranger won't see your credit card information or your medical information or anything like that. Um, expert tip, we use this for clients that want to give a lot of times either their older parents or their younger kids access to their photo library um, without worrying about them being able to delete or modify it. Um, so we will go in and make a space for somebody's mom, as an example, and we will change the permissions so that they are not able to make changes or delete any photos. Um, they're just able to view the photo library. Dynamic search and quick filters. So after you've done all of the work of organizing and sorting and tagging your client's photos or your photo library, you'll want to be able to utilize that work. So um, with dynamic search and quick filters, you are able to filter your photo library um, with a bunch of different ways to find any photos that you were looking for. So like yesterday, we had a meeting with one of our clients and he mentioned wanting to be able to find home videos from when his kids were younger and like 2001. Um, so since we've tagged the videos with the person and we know what year it's in, we could filter it by date and by person and easily find that video or any photos. And then with the dynamic search, um, I, as an example, went in and typed in Sadie, which is one of our clients' dog's names. And it shows you all of the different uh, results that show up based on kind of the category that they are. So there was 900 photos that Sadie was tagged in. She also had some folders where the name Sadie appeared in the folder name. And then there were some images um, where Milia went in and read the name um, Sadie in that image. And those appeared down there as well. I, so I should add that this is a very important feature for us because during our analog um, side of scanning of the images for the clients. If they've got photos with any kind of notes on them, those end up in the title. And this dynamic search is amazing for them to find things if there's a date or something specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is kind of the end goal for all of our clients is they want to be able to search their photo library. We've done all this work so that they can do so. Um, and Milio makes it really easy to search and filter by pretty much any kind of uh, category you can think of. So this is what our clients are looking for at the end of all of the work. So we just sort of gave you our kind of greatest hits of Milio. I wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about um, our business as a professional photo organizer and how Milio can help us. We've talked about this a lot throughout this presentation, but I don't think it hurts to really kind of emphasize how much this software has helped us a be way more efficient. And photo organizing is a time consuming um, business. So, and time means it gets expensive for our clients. So when we found this software and realized how much time it was gonna save our clients, it actually helps us run a better business. Um, and so we, Sarah and I kind of brainstormed on kind of our favorite things, like the easy access to our client's photo library. If they need help long term, they really do need help. We do field questions from them periodically um, for the long term image management clients and from other clients who maybe didn't sign up for that, but have got some questions about adding new images and things like that. 
Um, we do keep our clients' images on our NAS servers for about three months, complimentary, if they decide not to do the in your, uh, image management. But it does give us peace of mind that all the work we did is safe and secure. We haven't ever lost anything. So, or had a client come to us and say they can't find something. But we just like to have the peace of mind knowing moving forward when we say, let the Mylio library to the client that we can have it a little bit extra padding in case they lose their hard drive or hot, God forbid, because it's a lot of work. Um, we like the customizable tool. Our clients have very specific ways they want to find things in their library. And that's part of our onboarding process is to really ask, what do you, how, how does your brain work? How will you look for stuff? Like my brain may search for dates, but her brain may search for names. So we want to have that customizable feature so that we can best present this library to our clients so that they can best understand it the way their brain works. Um, we all ha have multiple devices now and we all have images spread across multiple devices. Well, that's no different for our clients. In fact, often our clients have, you know, crates and crates of old laptops, hard drives, cell phones, you know, any kind of media holding device you can think of, tiny SD cards. So we really appreciate the ability of Mylia to help us consolidate that stuff. Um, Sarah talked about the sharing the full library or parts of the library with friends and family members. We do have some clients who are older and I think um, they aren't as technologically savvy or maybe they're not older and they're not as technologically savvy, but we want to make sure that we protect what the work we've done and we have controls to do that in Mylio through a lot of different ways. Um, sharing the library, the vaults that Sarah mentioned. Um, I can't keep going, I can keep going back to this, the affordable option for you and your clients. The actual work of photo organizing is very time consuming and it's expensive. I like to talk about how we're purveyors of time, right? Our clients value their time and they know that this is going to be a big project. We're not talking 10 hours, we're talking hundreds of hours that many of them can't find. Okay. Or, and they don't know how to do it. We are efficient. So what takes us two hours might take our client five to 10 hours, depending on if they have the right equipment, if they know how to run the software, that kind of thing. Um, so being able to give them a software after a 10 to $40,000 project, that's either free, but you, we usually do the photos plus or a little over a hundred dollars a year is such a win for our clients. Um, the great support that we get as certified Milio professionals, JC, I saw his face on there today, has has really uh, given us a lot of help, as has Lori and Angela we and Tracy, because we were figuring this out at the beginning, right? We were new a few years ago, and we knew this was something that could work for us. And their efforts have helped us and hopefully we've helped them make the software better. And then the, the forum is such a great resource. We're constantly referring to that. Um, the user manuals, we can't get over how detailed these user manuals are. Um, and the, how, and we do reference those often for our clients. We make little self-help or like help videos that are specifically dialed in with their database. Because like I said, sometimes technology is a challenge, but if they have a little YouTube, a little video that they can follow looking at Mylio and looking at their very personal database, then they can find things. Um, and kind of the big win for us was this, uh, since having Mylio, it has given us the ability to offer annual image management service to our clients with multiple devices. And that is something that we didn't anticipate, but the majority of our clients are like, yes, please. I don't want to deal about this. I don't want to worry about this. So in a way we're, we're bringing them peace of mind and Mylio is helping us do this. And so what a great offer for your clients to say, get, we got this, you know, we've got it. Your images are safe. Don't worry about it. Just turn on Mylio. And then, you know, then we're in the business of nagging them to do it. Right. But um, it's a, it's a great offering that when we started photo organizing, we didn't anticipate, but the majority of our clients really, really appreciate that. There's a lot of value in offering that service for our clients. 
Um, when, okay, so you're just a photographer, just a photographer. I know we're not just photographers. You're a photographer. You've got a gazillion images. Do you want to do this yourself? Or you're a, you know, you're a family, you've got a gazillion images or your aunt passed away and you've got, you know, 25 albums in your attic. Um, when do you think it's time to hire a photo organizer? I mean, I think really it's looking at time. Is this something that you are interested in that you want to do that's great sarah loves this she does it for her personal life as well as for all of our clients uh, some of our clients are like i can't do this i just want you to do it so you ask yourself do you have the time do you want to buy the equipment right are you willing to like stay up to speed on all the software changes like Milio just rolled out a big change a big update which is great but we we work hours to get up to speed on that. We spend lots of time studying that and asking questions. We also think, you know, a professional photo organizer can help set up your initial structure. Sometimes our clients come to us and say, tame the beast. And then we teach them how to fish, right? We teach them how to do it moving forward because we don't always want to be taking over clients' images. We, we have only a certain amount of bandwidth. So if somebody comes to us and says, tame the beast, I want to run it from there, that's great. Um, if you're looking for advice on how to organize or set up your images, a photo organizer is definitely the person for you. How do you name things? Think about naming conventions, folder structures, that kind of thing, okay? I mean, the biggest one is you don't have time right for your digital images that that's what we run up against a lot a lot of our clients are super busy they know their hourly rate basically and they just don't have time for this and they but they want it done we've broken it down maybe they've had a loss in the family um maybe they just want to get it off their to-do list maybe they're working on a big book project and they can't find anything and they just throw their hands up and run out of the room screaming that's when they call us <laughs> um You've had, uh, I just talked about a loss. It's very emotional for a lot of our clients. I would say about half of our clients come to us because they've lost a, a dear, dear person, often their spouse. And they have all these images that are so precious, but looking for them is so hard. And so that's where we come in, okay? Um, and then just kind of some other stuff like backing up your photo library. Lots of our clients don't have their libraries backed up and they lose sleep over it. So we can help you. A photo organizer can help you just say, okay, is your iCloud syncing? Where are these images going? How can we look at that? Um, and then finally, if you want to plan, we also offer and photo organizers offer photo plans. Like here's a plan for you to organize your pictures, okay? Um, we also do things that we haven't included here, but like albums, photo walls, things like that, that once the al the images are all organized, we work with the client maybe to create an album a year. That's super popular and actually really fun for us. That's more creative, right? Okay. Becoming a professional organizer. So I just wanted to touch on this a little bit. Um, I know you guys are all jazzed about Milio and I see all the questions coming in, but you know, we are here to sort of talk to you about photo organizing and our experience with Milio and why we love it. But photo organizing is a is a specific mindset. I mean, do you enjoy organizing? Some photographers I know are the most unorganized people in the world. They cannot find anything. They have only one hard drive of images and that's like their whole body of work, which makes me panic when I think about that. I, I have a... Um, um, we want you to think about what kind of photo organizing software do you want to use, right? These are all questions that we want to ask ourselves. Do you want to work with just old Al photo albums and prints, or do you want to also add digital, or you want to do hybrid? I recommend hybrid because eventually all these analog prints are going to go away, right? We're not making as many prints anymore, but boy, are we making photos. I have 64,000 photos on my phone right here, okay? And they go back to... I don't know, 2000 um, right now when I had a Palm Pilot. Remember those? Okay. Who is your ideal client? Do you guys want to work with families? Do you want to work with corporations? You want to work with universities? My first ever big organizing project was with the University of Washington's Department of Global Health. And that was um, thousands and thousands of images on people's hard drives and people's email. It was a big nightmare. Um, and there was also a lot of stipulations like you can't use any photographs of somebody taken in Africa 
for an HIV AIDS project because um, so we had to mark a lot of those images because in small villages, it's a, it's taboo. It's, you know, if you, you don't want anyone to know that you have HIV and so, but everybody knows that she has the red headscarf. So we had to have a lot of parameters on those images. And that was, so think about that. Where are there large bodies of images? What do you like working with? Is it veterinarians? You know, that's something to think about too. Um, digitizing in-house or outsourcing. Uh, there's a lot of equipment investment. As a photographer, we had scanners. We knew all about scanners, camera scanning. We had all that stuff. Um, then we got to reel to reel and all that kind of stuff. And we made the decision. I sort of was like, eh, I don't want to have all that gear. I don't want to be a specialist in that. I am not the expert in that. I'm going to pay somebody who is. So we outsource everything but flat art. Um, how do you want to market your business? I have to tell you, our biggest win right now is a small, tiny papers around the Puget Sound area. I'm a former journalist. I wanted just to support my local community paper. So I was like, sure, sign me up for an ad, you know, a couple hundred dollars. I just was doing it honestly, literally to support the paper. And it's been our biggest win. I couldn't believe it. Um, and then I also like to give a shout out to the photo managers. That's a great resource for those of you who are considering uh, coming up uh, this the vine here of becoming a photo organizer. They have some great resources there. Uh, we're currently working on a course with them, but it's, it's a design for photographers, but we, uh, but that'll be out probably in the early of next year, but that's sort of going into a deeper dive of this. Okay. That's our last slide, I think. And benefits of being a certified Milo consultant. So Milo is awesome and it has a pretty you know, decent learning curve. So if you're going to be offering this service to your clients, you need to be awesome at it. And so that's where Milio certified consultant groups come in. And it's a pretty hard test actually. And, um, but there's some cat questions, right, Sarah? Um, but uh, I would say, think about that. If your path should take you into the world of using Milio for organizing photos for uh, clients, um, and these guys can help you with that. I think they had a poll. So is that, that might be our last slide before we get to all your questions. So that's, that's us signature photo organizing. We're in the Pacific Northwest. We are women owned and run. And if you guys want some more resources, there are some available for photo organizers on our website. And for those of you who like to do things like this DIYers, as we call you. So we look forward to answering your questions. Great. Fantastic presentation. You too. Thank you so much. Um, we do have some questions, and I was going to start with John, who was asking any tips on how to digitize decades of photos, which you kind of touched, but maybe yeah. you can talk about a little bit more. Uh, I guess, I mean, Sarah could add too. I think it depends on the size, right? Like we've found that camera scanning is great and fast. I mean, you're looking at an investment minimum of 1500 to 2000 bucks um, for the gear. We also have a rapid scanner. Um, made by Epson that's fun for four by sixes. That was a game changer for sure. Uh, I also think it depends if they're in albums. I mean, every album brings with it its own unique challenges, shall we say? We were looking at albums yesterday with a client and they have all those individual flip pages. And all we see there is like, oh, hours of pulling things out, right, Sarah? <laughs> um, I would say too a lot of times we will try to prioritize like what our client um wants the most or what's the most important to them and start with yeah. that stuff especially if it's a really large collection of photos or albums yeah yeah it's because it's if you're if it's for you that's different right but it's still adding up your hours like think of it as like a wheel so if you can go through and call everything we try to have our clients like call stuff and then give us their most important, like go through it at least once and get rid of like all the landscape pictures. If that's not your thing, like one client just wanted photos with people in it for, because that was more meaningful. So I think the more work you can do calling it down, the more efficient you'll be. Great. Okay. So Luke is asking, do you use events and event folders? If not, why not? I would, that depends on client. Okay. Yeah. Right, Sarah? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the organizing 
um, tools that we like to use are things that transfer out of Mylio as well. Um, like I said, sometimes people like to make copies of their photo libraries and sh give it on hard drives to family members or friends that aren't using Mylio. So things like keywords and the facial tagging, um, we know will transfer out as well. So we try to kind of prioritize that, but it just depends on the client. If the client's really like super into Mylio and wants us to use all of the different features, then we will sometimes. Okay, great. There's a question about, would you suggest the software for a family archive? How would you best use it for different groups and access? Absolutely, for a family archive. I mean, that's kind of what we do. Sarah, what would you think for best group access? What do you mean by groups? Like different groups of family, family? members? That's how I read I believe it. That's what they're asking, yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, the spaces feature is great uh, to use for different groups of family members and stuff. Now, if you don't want to share the entire library with every group of family member, like everyone in each group, um, like if you want your mom to only have photos of her, you can make a space specifically set up that way. Um, I would really look into spaces and utilize that for different groups. If I may jump in here, um, that, that is the exactly what we design spaces for, not just to use it within your daily use of Mylio, which is great for that, but to designate a particular space to a particular device. So if your mom, like my mom, can only use an iPad, my mom calls her iPad Facebook. <laughs> uh, I can designate a particular space to that device and then on that iPad, she can only access certain photos and she's not able to delete or modify or anything from that device. So that is what the spaces and, and the remote control feature is for. So it's it's great for that. Great. Okay, next question from Atwell is asking, I may have missed it, but do you use albums at all? Um, sometimes, again, it's like dependent on the client and albums are not, they don't transfer out of Mylio. Um, we'll, a lot of times we'll use albums if we have a client that wants to make a physical album. This yeah. allows both us and them to put photos from their library into that digital album um, and kind of put together the images that they want actually printed into a physical album. So it is client dependent, but generally no. Uh, Bill is asking, how would you recommend keeping the front and back images of a photo together, specifically when sharing, oops, hang on here, just jumped, <laughs> when sharing the image uh, via print and or digital images to a non-tech savvy relative? Front, like and back. if you scan in the yeah. on the back of a print. The... I believe yeah. they're saying, so yeah. So when we those. scan in, yeah, when we scan in, um, prints for our clients, we give every print a specific number. Um, so if a lot of times we don't scan in the backs of prints unless there's like a nice handwritten note or something kind of important. Um, if it's a short note, we'll just put it in the file name though instead. But if we do have to scan in the back of the print, we will give it that same unique number as the front side of the print was given. Um, then if you were in Milio, you could search that number and both should show up. Um, if I guess you can make different albums for each one. I don't know how many prints you have the backs and fronts of, of, but I would give them the same name at least so that when you search, they you know that they'll both show up. Okay. I, I use I use a letter at the end of the of the name. So the front of the picture is file one A and the back of the picture is file one B. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, here's a uh, money question, so feel free to answer or not. Uh, Karen is asking, can you give me a range of the cost of you organizing a 50,000 photo library with and without the ongoing annual help? Um, you know, we it's hard to give a range because we have made that mistake in the past and we're like, oh yeah, we think it's going to be this much. But then when we drill down, the client wants best selects, it wants deduping. So it depends on the feature, the the kind of the granular organizing that you want. I mean, an annual also our annual help 
ongoing image management is build, we charge by terabyte or basically by gigabyte. So if it's 50,000 digital images versus 50,000 analog images, it's really hard. I mean, I can give you a range of like what it costs for, you know, we've taken clients for 20, 2,000, 2,500, and all the way up to our biggest client that's maybe in the 80, 80,000, but that's like mega terabytes and five years and, you know, an album a year and stuff like that. So it's a real range. I mean, I don't know, 50,000 photos. It Also, it depends on the format and how old they are and what kind of labeling you want. So it really is time dependent, you know? I don't know if that probably didn't answer her question, but it is really, we really have to get a good look at what we're dealing with before we can make any kind of guesstimate. They can contact you directly and you can probably yeah. give oh, them yeah. a better answer. Definitely. Right? Yeah. And usually we can do a quick 15 minute Zoom call and do a deep dive in what you got and then kind of come up with some idea. Great. Thanks. And the phone number and emails right on the screen. Oh yeah, there, there it is. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Atwell has another question. Does your service include raw file conversion to JPEG? I have tons on raw files from a variety of cameras over 20 years. Would you go through and convert them to JPEG as a part of the organization process? I mean, we can. You know. Can I jump in here? Yeah, do it. <laughs> I, I can't speak to what uh, Jennifer and Sarah will do as part of their service, but please don't get rid of your raw files. Yeah. It is a really, really bad idea. And I'll give you a perfect example. I'm an underwater photographer. The, f the, the second camera that I took underwater was one of Nikon's first digital SL uh, SLRs. Uh, uh, Nikon, oh God, I don't even remember the, the model number. Uh, but it was a five megapixel camera. I still have those raw files. And what I'm able to do with those photos with the software available today, because I have the raw file, it's amazing. I can make these photos look infinitely superior to what I could do in the past. And if I had converted them to JPEG, that would no longer be possible. So don't get rid of your raw files. If you put your photos in Malio, Malio will read the, the raw files and display them on every device. So you don't really have to convert them to JPEG. There's uh, very little to gain other than some storage savings. And mm -hmm. quite honestly, um, hard drives are so cheap that I, I would recommend not to get rid of your raw files. Yeah. Sorry, that, I, I had to jump no, in no, there. No, no, because... that's great. That Because that I didn't touch on this, but as photographers and photo organizers, we don't get rid of anything, right? Like we, I have a strict policy in my studio. You hand us a batch of images. We create a copy of that. And that goes on our servers, our NAS servers. And then we, that copy is what we work from to build the photo library. Why is that? Because our clients inevitably will call us and say, I don't see the photo of Leo in the Halloween pumpkin suit from 1997, right? And we know for a fact, we didn't throw anything away. Now that's a little different than some uh, a different, home organizers might have a different take on that. But as a photographer, like JC said, storage is cheap. And we used way back when I shot film, we used to say film is cheap. You'll never be back here right? This moment doesn't happen again. So don't throw anything away. We don't. I mean, sure, you got the, you know, screenshots of the sweater that you want or whatever. Milo has a feature for that. But I am a big believer of you cannot go back. And if you look at like some great photographers like Cartier-Bresson, some of these great photographers, they go back into their negatives, you know, and they find like these amazing pictures that at the time Brisson was like, eh, that's a, eh, eh, but, right? So you've got this opportunity to go back in and find some amazing things that you may have missed the first time. So, and we don't, I don't, even in my photo business, I don't delete anything. I call it down to present the client, but I never delete anything. So. Fantastic. Okay, Meg is asking, my questions for Jennifer or Sarah, do you look for undated photos, photos without proper intact date metadata before importing a client's files to Milio? If yes, how? Not before. Um, so we do all the dating in Milio and they actually, in like the calendar view now, they have 
it's in like if you scroll all the way to the top um there's an undated section so that's just a way like quicker way to navigate um i usually just use the calendar view to kind of know what photos in the wrong place and change it within my leo instead of trying to do it in the finder window okay and Harold is asking, with large numbers of photos, what do you use for scanning lots of slides, especially those in carousels? Is there a cartridge-based scanner? Slides. Those are another beast. We mm -hmm. we don't we don't we're not set up to scan massive amounts of slides. We have an ability to scan like small amounts if they find we find them in the box, but we outsource slides. It's just too much. We can't, we can't do it all. We chose not to take on slides. Yeah, it's, it's not a trivial investment. The, no. the, the technology exists yeah. for doing that uh, in a mass scale, but unless you're doing it all the time, there's a lot of services out there that you can use though. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, um, Erica is asking, are you exclusively organizing in Milio photos or a hybrid of Lightroom? and Milio. No, we are exclusive Milio shop. We've moved cool. away from Lightroom at all, all for our, this photo organizing. Milio is just too, too good. <laughs> Love it. No, I mean, it, it, we, we've, we've done, I've used Lightroom for 30 years, you know, but when, for our clients, this is a way better and more efficient system. Okay. Let's see here. We've got two more questions. Uh, Luke is asking, event folders are in the folder structure, so they are available for non-Milio users, or is it mainly because you may not know the events themselves as you're not an owner of the media? I think he's asking about the events that we were uh, asking before, so maybe you don't know the events. Uh, so he says it's a really nice feature. Well, we ask our clients. Right. It's all client driven in our house, in our studio. So if a client says, look, I want every Hanukkah, New Year's Eve, Halloween as an event, then we will do that. But a lot of our clients are just there. They're, we don't have a lot of requests for that. I don't. Right, Sarah. I mean, it's mainly date and people. Yeah. Okay. All right. And we're going to end it on this last question. Brian is asking. What do you wish Milio did or did better? I have a very specific feature that I would okay. want. Uh, if a photo has been tagged with a person, I really want there to be the little, like like how the map, uh, if there's like a, a location on a photo and the upper in the little thumbnail, it'll have the little mark that shows that it has a location. I really want a little person that shows like, it's been tagged with a person because when I'm going through like thousands of photos sometimes it's like okay where did I leave off what photo has been tagged what photo isn't tagged with a person that's my very specific feature that that's great <laughs> otherwise everything else is great <laughs> yeah we're, we're continuing to up, update the product to make it better and better so um, we do appreciate feature requests so it's a good one yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, Sarah and Jennifer, fantastic presentation. Really appreciate all that you shared today. Expert tips. Those are real fun too as well. And then also for our mind, you know, photos, uh, workers in the background that were busily answering a lot of questions. So again, uh, you'll be able to view this on our website. You'll get a link and um, yeah, we just really appreciate you both. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks everybody for joining us as well. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so thank you. much. All right. Have a good Thanks, week. Thanks everyone. You Bye. too. Bye-bye.